Welcome to Angling Buzz presented by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. On today's show, we're gonna talk about a very specific lure category. And nowadays you walk in any good retailer and you got a lot of different options to choose from. You'll see aisles and aisles of different jigs, live bait rigs, blade baits, rows and rows of soft plastics. Well, of course, we also can't forget about topwater baits. Now, one of the most diverse lure categories has to be crankbaits. And over the course of the year, we use cranks for everything from uh, panfish and trout to muskie, walleye, pike, and bass. And crankbaits, they come in different shapes, colors, patterns, and action. You have sinking baits, floating baits, suspending baits, and even then they're divided between casting and trolling baits. And crankbait manufacturers, they make tiny little micro baits for panfish and trout, all the way up to giant lures for top of the chain apex predators. On today's show, we're joined by guide Tony Roach. We're gonna pick his brain on the subject of crankbaits. So Tony, it's the second week of June. What have you been catching on crankbaits this spring? Troy, you're 100% right. Crankbaits catch fish all season long. Starting out with this spring, the first trip of the season, I headed out to Green Bay using lipless crankbaits for giant walleyes. Now how you're fishing these things is you're pitching them out, letting them hit the bottom, momentarily sitting on the bottom, ripping them, letting them fall, ripping them, letting them fall, and then retrieving them back to the boat. Now, these fish are coming and going into these river systems. Some are pre-spawn, some are post-spawn, but you're looking for those warmer water areas in which these fish are staging to go up river. Now, you could fish these lipless crankbaits in sand, in rock, in weeds, all in the same fashion, pitching them out, letting them hit the bottom, momentarily sitting, and then ripping, and then just slowly working them back to the boat. Great way to catch fish all year long. Hey, Tony, what was the water temperature during that time? That's a great question, Troy. You know, water temps were in the mid to lower 40s, which most anglers would think that this presentation is way too aggressive for that time of the year. Not the case. Year after year, you can constantly produce these giant walleyes on these lipless crankbaits by fishing aggressively. What I like about the presentation is you can cover water quickly, but it's incredible how hard those fish crack those baits. Now, what about smallmouth bass? Hands down, my favorite crankbait to fish for smallmouth would have to be a jerkbait. With jerkbaits, I can cover water quickly. I fish a lot of big water situations, so using that jerkbait, I can find out where the fish are located on the structures. X wraps have to be one of my favorites. Second would be a shadow wrap, like a slow sinking bait. So if I'm fishing shallow, I'm pitching that X wrap up there, working the tops or the top edges. If the fish slide out a little bit deeper, or like we've experienced now, where you're getting a lot of post-spawn fish, I'll cast a shadow wrap out there, adding pauses in there, allowing that bait to shimmy down or slowly sink as I retrieve it back to the boat. What I like about that shadow wrap is I can fish it at multiple depths because of the slow sinking nature. Now, I usually start out with long pauses, but as the water warms up and these fish get aggressive, you can really shorten your pauses and fish those aggressive. If you're getting fish that are chasing it to the boat and don't quite commit, that just tells you that you've got to add some more pauses here to your presentation. But as we get past post-spawn, another favorite tactic of mine that's a can't miss all year is that post-spawn topwater bite. It usually coincides with the mayfly hatches. That is soon to come, and I tell you what, that puts a smile on my face. Watching these giant smallmouth come up and slurp topwater, it's soon to come. Now how about micro baits? I've done well throwing micro baits for different types of trout, brown trout, brook trout, rainbow trout, fishing in small little streams, as well as lakes and ponds. I use micro crankbaits for panfish all season long. What I love about crankbait fishing for panfish is it weeds out the smaller fish. You're really targeting the bigger fish within the schools. You know, I think a lot of anglers tend to overlook crankbaits and tend to overlook panfish come summer. You know. Once those fish start to move out of those shallows and they get in those big expansive weed flats or weed edges, they kind of get lost in the mix and you really don't see a lot of people out there targeting them all summer. You tie on a crankbait, let's say a small X wrap, it could be a husky jerk, shad wrap, or even top water, 
and you're gonna start putting larger panfish in the boat all season long. You're gonna get the, to the fish quicker just by simply covering water until you get to that point where you can spot lock over those big schools of fish. It's really a fun way to catch fish all season. Well, thank you, Tony, for sharing some insight into crankbaits. And stay with us after the short commercial break. We have more crankbait strategies as Angling Buzz continues. You can't choose the weather, but you can choose to dress for it. Introducing Blackfish Performance Rain Gear. Utilizing patented event technology, this advanced membrane allows body heat and vapors to escape while offering 100% waterproof protection with an exceptional combination of waterproof and breathability ratings. Blackfish Rain Gear keeps you dry all day. Whether on the tournament trail or chasing weekend walleyes, choose Blackfish because you can't choose the weather. Northland tackles in the premium hardbait game with the Rumble Crankbait Series, available in 15 custom artisan colors. All Northland Rumble Series baits are handmade with a unique heat compression molding process that ensures unmatched durability and baits that run true on the troll and cast farther than the competition. You'll discover that walleyes and other species find their unique role in actions simply irresistible. You're gonna wanna up your game with these new cranks. Fishing is definitely better with balsa. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Customer first, that's their mission at Don DeLinger Auto. It's not just about the sale, it's about giving you peace of mind for as long as you own that vehicle. Don DeLinger is home to the lifetime powertrain warranty for new and pre-owned vehicles, plus 10 years of roadside assistance. They have an incredible variety of the most popular vehicles and offer pickup and drop off for service. Stop in to experience the Don DeLinger difference today. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Up next is our Timely Topics feature, and today we're talking about crankbaits. You know, crankbaits are a critical way to catch fish, especially predator fish. No matter if you're fishing rivers, natural lakes, reservoirs, crankbaits have a place in your tackle box. But a lot of people are often confused as to when to cast crankbaits versus when to troll crankbaits. And I tell you what, you're probably seeing some of the wind behind me. I'm definitely feeling it. When I hear and feel wind, I get excited for crankbait fishing because so often that wind will drive a really good crankbait bite. And specifically, I'm thinking about casting crankbaits in the wind. And you know, when I talk about casting crankbaits, there's a lot of ways to do it. I prefer spinning rods um, because so many of the crankbaits that I like to throw in the wind are light balsa baits and you really need the right kind of action on a rod, a very moderate action rod, not just to keep from pulling hooks out of fish, but to cast and fling those light balsa baits long range, even when the wind is at your back as it should be. Now when I think casting, I'm, al I'm also thinking about smaller spots. I'm thinking about isolated structure, I'm thinking about rocks up shallow, I'm thinking about points on lakes, very defined locations where the wind is piling up in that water, it's really roiling up and creating a surf, and it's drawing all kinds of different things into the water from macroinvertebrates and, and all kinds of zooplankton, photoplankton, phytoplankton, and then all of the bait fish that come in to feed on those, that's what's gonna draw in predators. That's what's going to bring fish in from the depths to come up shallow. And when fish are shallow on wind-blown structure, they're up there for one reason, and that's to eat, right? So. When I'm thinking about casting, I'm thinking about smaller spots. Now, to, to cross that up a little bit, if you're gonna talk about trolling, trolling to me is the great way to present crankbaits in general, but it's also a great way to fish longer, wider structural elements. When I start to think about trolling, I think about shorelines. 
if I'm talking points, I'm talking about massive points that are a half mile to a mile long or longer. When I set up a trolling run, I'm trying to cover a long stretch. And the great part about trolling is that when going parallel to such good breaks and structure, whether it be sand breaks, whether it be a rocky shoreline with a good dip off, whether it be a weed line, I'm thinking about covering water and keeping that bait in the zone. That's what trolling is all about. Now, no matter what outfit I'm using, whether I'm casting, whether I'm trolling, I'm big on braid as long as you have the right rod for the job. Again, a moderate action rod will allow you to be able to use braid. You'll be able to feel the bait, feel when it's fouled, be able to clear that fouling, whether it be from a pine needle or a leaf or something to that effect. But you're also going to get so much more feel on the fishing end of it, right? But no matter what I do, when I'm fishing braid, I usually have a fluorocarbon leader. And the length of that leader is always determined by the clarity of the water that I'm fishing. If I'm fishing something ultra gin clear, I'll have up to a 30 foot leader. And that's you know less so when casting, but especially when I'm trolling, I need a long leader to be able to cover those clarity situations and make it transparent and keep those fish eating. Now, when it comes to really murky water, sometimes I'll go just straight braid because it tends not to matter as much. But whether I'm fishing with a long leader, a short leader, or no leader, I've always got a snap on. And a big wide crankbait snap, I like to use some of the bigger ones because it really allows that bait to move freely. So many people use snaps with crankbaits because it allows them to switch back and forth very easily to a lot of kinds of crankbaits. And hey, when you're trolling, it's all about figuring out the secret sauce, right? So that's great. But having a big snap, a big wide one, allows you to get maximum wobble on that bait and really imparts a ton of fish catching action that can really make the difference in attracting more fish to your setup. So there you have it, crankbaits, whether you're casting, whether you're trolling, are a great way to get bit and you know, take some of these tips and be able to use them. I know it's gonna help you catch more fish. Well, stay with us after the short commercial break. We have our BuzzBite reports. In 2020, Minnesota watercraft inspectors found that 97% of boaters were doing their best to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. In short, drain plugs were removed, no standing water was inside the boat, and no zebra mussels or plants were found on the boat or trailer. Thanks for following these simple habit-forming rules. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from motors and live wells. Remove all boat plugs and dispose of unused bait in the trash. Want to save even more at Fleet Farm? Well, now you can with Fleet Rewards. It's free to sign up and there's no credit card required. Using Fleet Rewards is easy. Earn points every time you shop. Plus, get exclusive member offers, birthday and anniversary perks, free tire rotations, and more. Download the Fleet Farm app or create an account at fleetfarm.com rewards to start earning points today. Fleet Farm, proudly serving the Midwest since 1955. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. Tired of doing this? Oh, yeah. Get a can of this and spend more time doing this. No one, yeah. Whoa. Marine Pro Fuel Treatment helps marine engines start easier, run smoother, and last longer. Seafoam! Marine Pro, new from the makers of Seafoam. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment. Just pour it in. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Available now at Fleet Farm. Hey everyone, Troy Peterson, Mr. Bluegill, and we are out on Lake Winnebago for this week's Buzz Bite Report, and we're chasing the crappies. The crappies have really started to uh, pick up here, staging in, in the baits, uh, getting ready to spawn. Our water temperature is getting pretty close to their spawning 
um, there's spawning temperature, you know, the low 70s, and uh, a lot of nice, nice fish, a lot of males. Um, and what we're using, the water's super clear, so what we're having to do is troll behind the boat, you know, with a slip bobber, um, you know, anywhere in that uh, three to six, three to seven feet of water, and uh, just real slow trolling on these gravel bars. And uh, that's where most of these fish are staging. Uh, as the water warms up, these fish are gonna move up into the shallow water for spawning. And then uh, right after that, kind of head back out to these gravel bars again. So um, get out, enjoy it, and uh, pretty simple to catch and great eating. I'm Troy Peterson, Mr. Bluegill. We'll catch you guys on the water. Thanks, Troy. Keeping with the topic of panfish, let's head west with Garrett Sphere, who's been on some huge bluegills. I'm out here with my wife and son. We are catching some big bluegills today. You guys having fun? Yeah. So bluegills are just starting to set up here on spawning beds in Otter Town County. Um, we're catching these fish here in nine feet of water today. And what I did is I just went and located these fish on the Hummingbird Mega Side Imaging. The uh, beds show up just like perfect moon craters in the side imaging. Get on top of them, spot lock, and uh, vertical jig for them. And it seems like they don't want you to jig it too hard, right? Just a little bit. Finley's been catching some bobbers, but we've just kind of been vertical jigging for them. As far as other species, the uh, bass have been kind of mixed in here chasing these bluegills around. The bass are, some are still on spawning beds, some are kind of out feeding these bluegills and chasing and spawning bluegills around. Crappie sponge is kind of wrapped up, so that's getting a little tricky to fish for, just because they're kind of spread out all over the place. Uh, walleyes, we just had a nice walleye mixed in here with these bluegills, kind of right here in these uh, uh, you know, nine to 11 foot uh, flats with scattered cabbage has been good for walleyes up here. And we will see you on the water, right, Finley? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Garrett. Now let's head north to Leech Lake with Jason Freed, who's been frying up some fish. Just got off the water here, it's early June. Do a little fish fry with the guides. Definite transition time period right now on Leech Lake. Water temps are on the rise, air temps are on the rise, which means fish are starting to slide off to those primary breaks. You're gonna wanna look to some well-known areas on the lake such as the rock reefs like Annex, Submarine, Moki, all right, various areas around Pelican Island. Uh, those fish are gonna start to slide out. You're gonna find them on the transition area. So if you can find gravel to mud, rock to mud, those areas, those are gonna be key areas here because with the, as the water temps rise, you're gonna start having bug hatches. All the baits gonna start sliding out there. So what should you use? Creature baits like crawlers, leeches, and even think about pulling spinners. Don't forget on some of those windy days, those fish slide up. A jig and a minnow is still gonna catch a lot of fish on Leech Lake. So right now, it's a great time. Get up here, get on the water, and catch some fish. Thanks, Jason. Now let's head north to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner, who's on a canoe trip with his wife, Holly. We just caught this nice muskie. We're getting into some bass, some northern pike. I'm gonna get this muskie in the water. Nice fish, Holly. Uh, fishing rivers like this, whether, I mean, you can paddle a canoe in some of the bays on Vermilion too, but we're up on the river here today and we're catching some nice smallmouth bass, some northern pike. Holly just got this nice muskie, pretty straightforward. We're throwing, we're throwing some blue fox inline spinner baits, uh, throwing some number seven, number nine floating rapalas, and also slow rolling some terminator spinner baits. So that's a lot, a lot of fun. The bass are post-spawn now. Most of them are done spawning and they're pretty much across the whole river here. So we're getting fish in any of these holes today. So be safe out there and most of all, have fun. Lake Vermilion, explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wild. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. Simple, fast, and easy. This automatic launching and loading system on BoatToTrailer.com makes unloading and loading your boat a breeze on both roller or bunk trailer configurations. This system is a simple one bolt install. No more hanging over the boat, no more cranking in the boat, and no more wet feet. Speed your boat ramp time by visiting BoatToTrailer.com.
You don't know their names yet. But you will. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. Today we're talking about crankbaits, so we're going to start off with the rumble stick from Northland Tackle. You can see these bright colors, great for walleye, salmon, trout. These can be trolled down to 30 feet, and they also have a unique design to them through wire construction within this premium ball. So great action, deep diving bait, the rumble stick series from Northland Tackle. Also from Northland Tackle, the Rumble Shad. Now this is a nice smaller size crankbait. This can be used for bass, walleye, also you know trout and salmon, and a smaller compact design. Again, the same through wire construction from the line tie to the tail, premium balsa, and some of these really hot colors. You've seen a lot of this kind of color, this spotted color design recently has been absolutely fantastic for just about everything that swims, especially this time of year. Up next, the hybrid treble hook short shank from VMC. This is an inline treble hook. As you can see, the eyelet and the line tie is in line with the hook. This allows for better uh, swimming action of the lure. You can replace this in your crankbaits, uh, your jerk baits as well. It's very unique. A lot of treble hooks, they're usually offset by 20 or 30 degrees. Not with this. This is in line, the hybrid short shank treble from VMC. And next from Rapala, the down deep husky jerk in some custom colors. Yeah, this is, this is a pretty hot color and a great bait. This is a suspending bait. This can be trolled deep, great VMC hooks. I have used this in the smaller model actually for walleye, uh, just flatline trolling, a fantastic series from Rapala and some new custom colors, the Down Deep Husky Jerk. And also from Rapala, the Rip Stop Deep. And this is a bigger addition to the regular rip stop. This will go down even deeper and the thing just stops on a dime. So when you're either ripping it, you're jerking it and you're snapping it, the thing just stops in place. And that is many times when the fish bite. Great for walleye, great for bass. This thing can get down, you know, down to like eight feet, even maybe even 10 feet on a very long cast. The Rapala rip stop deep. And for crankbait storage, the Plano Edge series, this is kind of unique. As you'll see, it has these silicone fingers on the inside of the box to help protect and separate your baits. No more hook tangles. Uh, and your baits don't get scuffed up. This is the XL box for bigger deep driving crankbaits. And then a smaller box for smaller crankbaits. It has a water wicking system, a dry lock seal. It blocks rust and then it easily opens just with one little flip up like this. And also uh, very dry and very durable the Plano Edge Series. And up next from Offshore Tackle, the Easy Crank Bait Tuner. You can see it has a tension knob here. You open up the jaws and you clamp down the lip and you do a little pop, you'll hear a click and then your bait is set. This is to correct baits that run off to the left or to the right and you want them to run straight and true. You can, you can do it perfectly with this. Pliers can scuff up your bait. They can break the bill, scrape the bill. Not with this. Tension knob, jaws, put it in, clamp it down. You hear a little click and you're set. Small crankbaits to big musky baits. And next, a great combo from Daiwa for trolling. We're going to start with the AccuDepth Plus. This is a great reel. You can see it has a spool clicker here. It's free spool when it's back like that. You turn the handle and it engages the drag system. Clicker button on the side, built-in line counter. This is a great value reel for trolling from Daiwa, the AccuDepth Plus. And to pair that reel, this is the RG Walleye Trolling Rod from Daiwa. This thing retails around $40. It extends out like this. This is an eight foot, medium, heavy power. Great for trolling. You have a lot of backbone to this rod, but you also have a lot of flex in the upper third portion of this rod to make sure your crankbaits and whatever you're trolling has a lot of action. You pair this with the AccuDef Plus and you got a one-two punch for trolling walleye. And next from Clam, the Fortis Walleye Net. You see this, you clamp, pull it down like that, easily locks into place. Nice deep net on this, and the handle also extends out even more, extends out really far. So even if you're shore fishing, this is a great net. You're fishing piers, off docks. This is a fantastic net, both for the shore angler and the boater. And finally, the Smooth Moves Air. This thing is an absolute back saver, especially in big water and in waves. You can adjust the tension up to 350 pounds per cushion and support with the push of a button. It also rotates 360 degrees and easily installs in a variety of boats, the Smooth Moves Air. 
And be sure to shop online at fleetfarm.com and also visit your local Fleet Farm store. And right now it's time for our technique of the week. Well, these fish are relating to the structures, but they're, they're hanging out a little deeper. And that's pretty classic for this time of year. And once you figure that out, we're, we're guessing they're in 27, 28 is when we're seeing a lot of the marks. And you figure that out and then you, you set up your plan accordingly with your, with your boards and your line back. And once you get that formula dialed in, boy, it's, it's a, you, you lock it in and you just repeat the process. You know, that's the system. So this is kind of a team deal. We've got three licensed guys in the boat so we can have three lines. And when you're talking about open water trolling, you want to have as many lines in the boat out as you can. So what that means is getting a couple lines away from the boat, you then drop in a line kind of straight off, kind of long line it. Teamwork, so Jeff's kind of keeping us on this break. And I'm getting these boards out. So what we're doing is we're using our line cutter. So we just caught that fish. One was about 200 feet out, and then you got the board off the board, and then you got the board out about probably another 20, 30 feet so it gets away from the, the boat. And the other one we had about 250 feet. So once you get it dialed in, what those fish are doing and how deep these baits are actually running, you can really dial it in and, and really have that program down when you're talking about line counters. So it's very important to have line counters to really keep that system going. So we'll get this bait out, again, about 200 yards, or 200 feet, I'm sorry. We'll get the board clipped on and get the board, and then I'll get the other one out, and then we'll get the, the long line out. And Jeff's keeping us, like I said, in line with where these fish have been uh, relating to the structure. Well, I tell you what, with this 9-9, it really makes it a real slick system. You know, we're not really contour trolling. I'm hanging around an edge, but you can drop your trolling motor down and just get this set uh, pointing straight. And then I can just steer with my remote control and, and keep this boat uh, in the direction we want to go and make minor adjustments. It's really a, a slick system for, for this kind of trolling. Yeah, the nice thing with Jeff's talking about, you got this lever on this kicker. You don't have to stand back here and run this motor. You got this lock mechanism and keep us going super straight. And like he said, he's using that bow mount with the remote to get us going left and right. So this is actually our speed mechanism and he's got his steering wheel right up front. So it works out really good. We can stand anywhere in the boat. When the boards go off, you don't have to be in the back. You don't have to be in the front. You can do whatever you want. So it's a pretty cool way of trolling. Pretty relaxing way to troll. It sure right? is. It's effective too, yeah, as we yeah. found out. Right. Well, today's show, we covered a lot of different aspects of crankbait fishing, and we have even more content, a lot more content online at anglingbuzz.com, videos, articles, buzz bite reports, and much more. On next week's show, we're talking about jig fishing mastery. And as always here at The Buzz, we want to help remind you to stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you're leaving any body of water, remember, clean, drain, dry. Well, thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Lindner, and we'll see you next time.